Hello. Hello. Look at that background. Everyone's always got better backgrounds than me. I'm all you need is a 98 inch screen TV. That's all you need. Oh yes, I'll 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 pull out my golden American Express card yeah. and get one. <laughs> uh, guys, congratulations on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to begin by asking you. I mean, there's so much going on in this show and and the book and and the, the the series and the characters and everything else. But I wanted to ask you both about this fantastic opening credits sequence mm. that you guys have. Uh, I thought I thought Koganada had upped himself with After Yang. I don't know if you've seen <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I have. But then he's come along and you, he's done this with you guys. Tell me about doing that because it looked like such an amazing experience, so colorful and uh, so yeah. much fun. I believe it was Sue's idea um, midway okay. through the shoot. Uh, it was, um, I, I sort of saw, I knew she had been developing an idea for the opening title sequence. And then she was sort of telling me her ideas as we were going along. And while we were in Vancouver shooting, they the production team had made this, or the production design team had made this incredible pachinko parlor set for us. And we're filled with these vintage pachinko machines. And uh, I think Sue, A, really wanted to use that space more and feature it more because it was so beautifully made. Um, and B, I think, uh, I believe that her her motivation was we recognize how um, how weighty this content of the show can be, how, how serious and dramatic the show can be. So let's inject uh, this really potent, a concoction of like joy and abandon uh, with all the characters, regardless of timelines. Cause you know, I get to dance with the young Sanja when she's mm. a young girl. And um, it, it was more of a celebration, I think of us as a, as a creative team making this, coming together and making the show as opposed to, um, or I don't in addition to here's the show that we made. It was, I think a moment of like, can we have this sort of, abstracted joy also available to for all of the characters because we see them going through so much in the actual show yeah i mean it's so much fun but you're right it is a nice kind of moment of i guess levity and amongst all of the yeah. the expansion of almost the, like the... a palate cleanser or something yeah, yeah 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 it's very good i mean uh, uh maybe anna i'll i'll chuck this to you first how how early on into the process did you did you know about the book or was it the scripts that came first and it was those that tempted you to wanted to take on this part I had heard about this project being made and my manager um, before he knew about the audition he was like I think you should you know try to read it and so I picked it up and I loved it so much but after reading it I wasn't quite sure if there would be a role for me because there aren't many full Japanese characters um, but I was really lucky because Sue had made this amazing character of Naomi, who um, represents women in the 80s during that time. And um, my mom was working right at the same time. And so I got to talk to her. And um, I, a lot of what Naomi is, is just a reflection of me going working in Japan and also what my mom went through. And Solomon, for you, I mean, obviously, you mentioned there about about um, uh, your younger, younger self, younger Solomon and stuff like that. Did you make a was there a point where you guys wanted to keep separate in terms of that you brought your own personal moments to to Solomon and that you weren't trying to replicate each other because you know sometimes you just want to you know I remember oh, when Tom right. Hanks did, For did Tom Hanks did Forrest Gump he spent a lot of time with the guy that plays the younger Forrest Gump I wonder whether yes. that's did or not oh that's interesting um we got to interact a couple of times but there wasn't an extensive there wasn't an opportunity for extensive like work between between each other I think because our shoot schedules were quite um, yeah. strenuous in that we were both units, Justin and Kay's, Koganada's units, were almost always shooting at the same time, either in different locations or sometimes like in the same sounds, you know, uh, adjacent sound stages. So more often than not, the days that young Solomon was working, I might have been working somewhere else. Um, and I think also because of COVID protocols at that time, we were trying, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of like opportunities to gather that much, um, but we did meet. Uh, and frankly, I remember why I came and watched him a couple of times, I think in the police station scene, um, cause I wanted to, I wanted to have, I wanted to witness it and then have like the experience of that flashback in my brain as if I had witnessed it myself. You know, sometimes we remember our memories from our childhood and it is this third person perspective that we would have never had access to. But that's how our memories were 
created. And so similarly, I watched it on the monitors to try to have like digest that and be like, right, this was a seminal part of Solomon's history. Uh, I've seen it. And I thought the young Solomon did such a brilliant job that for me, I was like, well, yeah. this is easy. <laughs> this is great yeah, yeah, material yeah. for me to use. Yeah. <laughs> if he could do it, I could do it. <laughs> yeah, all right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, guys, I wish I had more time, but I don't. But thank you so much for your time. Uh, which thank I hope you. the show goes really well for you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.